So I have been working, spent a, a good amount of time yesterday, working on an improved timeline component. Do I have the app open somewhere? Oh, it's right there. I should change the fab icon at some point. Ooh. Um. Hmm. Well, let me not let me not, not get distracted and say uh, create fab icon for project. There we go. Lots of lots of ideas. Lots of stuff to do. Like. Uh, and I think I've talked about this in the stream a couple times, you know, because we have our Rust backend. And so a lot of the, the backend of the APIs is uh, defined in uh, Rust structs. Like if you look at the CRUD API. Um, actually, is this a good example? Probably a better example is the, uh, like the, like the task API. We probably have structs that define kind of the payload coming in for things that have a payload, which list doesn't, but create task, here we go. So like we, uh, the create endpoint for the task API takes a create task input body, right? So here we have essentially a type, right? And saying these are the fields. Wouldn't it be great to generate TypeScript types, maybe come up with uh, something else to derive here, and then do something. There's some some research that I actually have attached to this this item. We're thinking about doing that. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that today, though. Honestly, those are the kind of things that uh, would have been good to figure out earlier on, because by now we would have, you know, would. I would have iterated on it a bit, would have proved it out. And now at this point, it would be, you know, it's a lot of setup work. I don't know, it doesn't work in all cases. And, you know, it becomes a bigger project. Um, and he had driven a uh, cut workflow to create episodes rather than using silence detection timeline directly. And, and this timeline is, yeah, this, this is what I was going to change, right? So if we go into streams, and I look at, so this is kind of the, well, let's, let's make a little bit more room here for the UI. Um, this is kind of my hit list of uh, streams that I'm working through to try to turn into YouTube videos. This is the backlog. Uh, I have actually the stream from the, the 26th of February, so this two months, over two months. Uh, a backlog to work through, um, but I actually have all of these. Uh, I've stepped through all of this and created uh, the videos on YouTube through with the tool. Uh, I've not published them. Yeah, I think they're all still waiting for me to schedule. I think I was gonna I was gonna work through get a, a little bit more of a backlog of videos on YouTube so I can actually properly schedule them to go out uh, anyway so like if you look at all of these have silence detection data and transcription data uh, so if I click into one and I go we now have in my uh, issue 25 branch we have a new tab called timeline so I essentially moved this timeline from the audio tab so this was like the silence detection area right so now we have like here are detected, detect the silences in the stream. So I've moved this and I have a, a new timeline that should, well, that's interesting. Oh, there we go, okay. Maybe I had some stale uh, JavaScript. Speaking of which, I should probably, nah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, so now, Instead of just having to select, like here are the places where there are silence, which is kind of weird, right? If you want to cut, uh, you know, episodes out, 
what you want to do is you want to select the area for the episode you want to select out. Oh, interesting. What do we, what do we got going on here? Okay, so there was like an additional handle in there. Okay, that's kind of weird. That should be... Um, should do something about that. So what's going on here? Okay, so that's that. That's that. Are we already overlapped? I think we're overlapped. I see. Okay. So I, I mean, I could see a use case for being able to select cuts of videos here. Are their, their episodes. Hmm. Let me think about that. Ultimately, what I may want to be able to do is visualize cutting an episode from multiple different segments. And this, this, this is not going to be sufficient for doing that. So I have to think about that. I might need like different colored, uh, shaded areas to represent like, I don't know, a color per episode so that you could have multiple cuts. I mean, like I want this section and then this section and that'll be episode one. And I want this part and this part. We're not doing that now. That's not the thing I'm doing. Um, I do see though one thing I need to be able to do in this UI is to be able to remove sections. So like right now what it's doing is it's looking at just like the silence detection data and it's um, filling the gaps with the sections, which is what I'm calling these shaded areas that indicate what, what are going to be cut to make episodes. So uh, in my PR, let's take a note of that as a thing to do. Um, yeah. So I have ability to place certain markers. I don't have, I don't have that yet. I have that as a thing to do. You should also be able to remove, uh, can remove, um, sections or segments. I think I use the word segments everywhere Can remove segments. So there's still some work to do. So we might work on this today. Um, but I think the first thing I want to do is there's something that I was working on um, whatever day I was working on it, three days ago. So OTIO is the open timeline format that we're using to export data out. And um, that branch so when we generate this the intent is to take let's see like if we go to an episode so let's say we go here right so here's an episode uh, right now I'm generally creating episodes that have like a single cut right? a start and end so in the stream that this episode is from it started at this time point and ended at this time point. The, the data model supports multiple cuts, but I'm not I'm not doing that yet. Uh, so what you can do from the episode is you can export OTIL. Now let's um, let's check out this branch 52. Pull that down. Um, and this just is front end changes. Right, because all of our OTIO export stuff happens in the front end, which I, I have mixed feelings about. This is also a bit of a refactoring to like create utility functions to create some of the different objects um, with, um, in some cases, like DaVinci Resolve specific metadata included in or, or not. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, and that file doesn't exist in this branch. But uh, I've not tested this yet, so we're going to test this and maybe this will just work. Uh, and if it does, then this is at least an opportunity to kind of demo 
what the tool does in terms of like I've I've never actually shown um, like importing stuff into DaVinci Resolve. Just call it test 17. And then uh, we'll see how this co comes out. All right, so I have a an, just the empty project here, uh, and then you can like you can Control I, import media, and then we'll select test seventeen. And then it thinks for a little bit. Or it just fails. Yeah. Mm. Ah, okay, okay. So when I right clicked and I said import media, that's control I. Don't let the capital fool you. So there's a control I to import media, and there's a control shift I, which imports a timeline from AAF, EDL, XML, or bunch of different formats um, so how would you do that otherwise you go to timeline and then maybe you go to file import timeline yeah control shift I okay right and then you get this dialogue and it's like okay how do you want to import this what do you want to call it um, timeline resolution so we just hit, hit, hit okay. This is gonna give us a couple of warning messages because the the generated timeline has a couple of placeholders where I have some effects that uh, some fusion overlay things. Yeah, two of two clips were not found. No. Yeah, so like reminder and live on Twitch, uh, not found. So, thinking for a second, there we go, let's go over to the edit view. So what I want it to do is I want it to position this clip at the end, like right here. I think this is kind of interesting because I think in the original file, well, I think there's a couple of things interesting about this actually. So one, in the uh, in the original file, like I just had a hard coded value for where the outro played, which is this part on the YouTube video. Um, which is way out here, you know, it's like 45 minutes or an hour out. So obviously the change has moved this back, but also I suspect that the reason this is offset like this is that it's this amount of time. Like when does this end? One minute, eight seconds. Is this a one minute, eight second gap? Then it ends at 38. 1438 to 1546. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not taking account that this is eating up time when I position this as issue one. And two, I think really unrelated to this, I think I, I recall because this this export I've done before for the, the 17th episode of the Power World series. Um, the files are not here, right? So we have 2054, and you can see the other ones are attached. The 2114, 2134, 2154, but they're not on the timeline. So that's, that's not right. So that's a second thing to debug.
Okay. So let's let's keep a, a list here. So one is that uh, not taking into account the existing uh, runtime of the, um, let's call it the overlay track. There might be a different word that I use in the other thing. And then um, the other issue is not adding all of the media files. To the timeline. Okay. So let's take a look at the code. So basically all the, the logic for the exporter is in this export.ts. And it's, it's still a bit of a mess. Um, like most of this is still just copy and pasted JSON. Oh, I call it overlay. Yeah, overlay. Cool. At least I'm consistent. So at least we have like, here's everything that's in that overlay track, right? So the overlay track is video two here. I wonder if I can rename this. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Video two. Overlay. Uh, right. And so then the the track has children. And so there's a clip. So like this whole thing is uh, name solid color. So this is the, uh, let's zoom in here. This is this part. I could, I could give a different name. Instead of solid color, this could be like uh, start buffer. That's what it's for. It's just the, it's a, it's a thing to occupy space in the timeline, which is very convenient for um, when you are cutting and moving stuff around. I found having this here was very helpful. So anyway, so that's that. And then we have live on Twitch. So this is just kind of a placeholder uh, because I couldn't find a way to make it auto add the uh, the effect. So that does mean that there are, there is still manual stuff that I have to do when I jump into resolve here. So I need to go over. So like this is supposed to be the uh, live on Twitch little overlay. So I'll drag that here and then I resize it to fit and then I drag it down and there we go, and then that appears. And then I have to go over to like reminder. At least this one is the right size. There we go, and so then. Got that little overlay overlay there as well. Anyway, um, so that's what these are. And so this gap is the space in between these two things. And so then here's like reminder. And then there's another gap. And this gap is supposed to be of a duration of total media duration frames. So that should be something. What did I calculate that as? It's, it's clearly wrong. <laughs> so I'm summing duration frames from all the tracks. But the issue is, is that I need to subtract out this amount of time from that time. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Because the gap is, it's the gap. It's the amount of time between these other things, right? So this value should really be, um, the wrong thing this this value no um, bu, 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 bu. there we go down here 
this should be this minus this the amount of time these things took. Uh, which I think these things are just hard coded, right? Duration. 300 plus uh, 1816 plus uh, 106. I don't know, is it 2216? Uh, well, this is not right, I think. Let's see. 300 checks out. Let's let's collapse them as we go through and get the numbers. And then uh, the duration of this gap is 1816. Which also needs to be included. And then the duration of this is 106, checks out. And then I think we did get the value from here. Lots of effects. 1910, 1910, checks out. All right, so we add all those things up and we subtract that amount of time from total uh, media duration frames and that should be the amount of time between all of these things and the end of the video. And so we're gonna position uh, the thing after the gap, right? So we're, we're adjusting the length of the gap to position this uh, transition. And the clip. All right, so we have a transition, a cross dissolve for 194 keyframes. And then we play, uh, here's why, where I've started to extract out uh, <laughs> creating the, the clip. So we have other places where we're, we're also, you know, I, I've not fully extracted all of this out. I guess ultimately, if I wanna go down this path, what I need to do is like create an actual proper like OTIO library, at least a, you know, a serialization you know something where you can i don't know what's the best way of doing that maybe maybe an object like hmm. there's something to be said for fluent interfaces and i think really the effective way of doing that is to define a class and kind of go that approach so i might do that if, I, if I'm feeling <laughs> annoyed by this enough. Um, so that should address this issue though. So the nice thing about this all being in the front end though is that we can just refresh the page and export again. Uh, and we'll save over the file, which should be fine. Uh, and then if we go back to media pool, I'll just delete everything. And we have an empty project again. And I just control shift I. And repeat the process. Nope. Okay. So now, there we go. What does this look like? Do we need this to be pulled back by the number of keyframes in the transition? Yeah. Otherwise the transition is not gonna work, right? So what we need is we need something like this for the transition to work properly where it fades in. There we go. Um, there's still other manual work that I have to do for this workflow because like right here in the video, um, it would be silent. So you would not, uh, there just, there's no sound, right? Because all the, all, all the audio tracks end. So typically what I do on videos, and I've not figured out, I've not really thought too much about how I'm 
how I would automate this, but I need to take the um, the track that has the music in it, um, whichever track that is. Is it track? Is it the sec the second one? I forget. Well, let's just say as an example, let's say it was the second track, right? So I would take this and hopefully, ideally, um, the the recording wouldn't end right there. Uh, in this case, because I'm missing the other files, there isn't extra that's trimmed off. So typically, typically, uh, especially for like, yeah, typically the, the actual media file, the end won't be like, where I want to cut it off is before. Let's uh, let's just okay, move that out of the way, and then move this back and move these all back. What are you doing? Oh, I see. Interesting. What is this object? Wait, 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 wait. Is this where the other clips are? <laughs> Multiple clips. So the other clips uh, are, are here. I don't know if I can get the right kind of cursor to actually be able to drag them to do anything. But this is where the other clips are. They're, well, I managed to delete them now, but I, that seems to be what, what happened here. We somehow, okay, cool. Well, that sheds some light on things anyway. Back to the example though, right? So let's say typically the, the actual episode end is before the media file ends. And so the, the, this looks like this. And then what I would do is I would take the track that has the music and I just extend it. And then I might like do a cut somewhere here so that I could start increasing the volume of the background music. And then I might like adjust it like this so that it kind of ramps up. So it's not like a sudden jump in volume. This is not the, this is not the music. This is probably me talking still. But anyway, this is the sort of thing that I would do on the video that I haven't figured out how to represent that. Uh, if I even can, I'm, I'm sure I could do something in the OTIO file. So that's, that's a, a feature endeavor. Okay, but we fixed the, the first problem. Uh, what is that, shift, backspace, there we go, delete. Wipe out the project again. Okay, so that, that's solved. Except, oh right, 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 except that the transition, the cross dissolve, it is 194 frames and we want to shorten the gap by that amount. Can we have Copilot write a comment explaining what this is? Something like that. Okay, so that sh that shortens the gap a little bit more so that the outro video starts 194 frames before the, vi the main timeline ends so that the transition can do the fade. Okay. Uh, and then the other issue is that we uh, apparently are adding the media files to the timeline. Um, but we aren't, they aren't showing up right. So I think to fix that, uh, let's see what's the easiest way for me to get into this. We need to go look at the OTAO file and uh, take a look at what's going on inside of it. So let's see, open. Okay, that'll open a new window, right? Because this is not inside WSL, this file. Okay, so here is the generated OTIO file. It should know that it's JSON. I guess it doesn't know 
from the extension. Right, so we have, what is this file composed out of? Okay, so we have disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. Um, this file is based on taking DaVinci Resolve, the version that I have, and like exporting an OTIO file and then importing it again and make sure it works. Um, so I don't actually know for sure that this is actually completely compliant. Like if you were to look up the, the documentation for the OTIO format, how close is it? Don't know. But it's what DaVinci Resolve supports. So that, that's what I care about at the moment. There's all sorts of Resolve OTIO metadata in here. It's interesting. I wonder if there are other things we can sneak in here to do stuff. I don't know. I suppose if I wanted to find out, I would probably just need to like mess around with things in Resolve and then export OTIO files and see how it changes things. Anyway, so we have an object called Tracks. And it is, it is a stack. And it has children. It has other things too, right? Whether it's enabled or not. Uh, but it has children. And then the children are all tracks. So we have a stack of tracks, right? And so some of these are audio tracks. Right, because we have like three audio tracks and then we have the overlay track, and then we have the main video track. So it seems like the problem that's happening um, in the the resulting import is like we are including the media files, the additional ones, but they're getting cut off somehow. And I'm not sure why. But we should see this in this track. Uh, no, in... Oh, interesting. Wait, so this one's called Overlay. And, and this one is called Video 1. What determines the order that they show up? Because it's clearly not this order. Okay, so the, the first thing is this transition. At some point I decided I really like the hexagon iris. It's kind of like an opening transition from, from black into the video. And then we have clips. Let's try to make this compact. All right, and for each video file that we're sourcing into the timeline, there's a clip. So we have a few. One, two, three, four. Uh, I guess to really to um, keep illustrating this, let me re-import this file. So like we have four video files for the four clips. But there's only one video file being referenced here, which is why this is only like 12 minutes or whatever, 14 minutes. So the other should be here, and apparently they are here. Just really small, and I'm not sure why. But it's interesting. If I, what if I delete this? There we go. What if I delete these? And interesting, it says zero clips now. Wait, let's go back. Let's see, four clips. It's a shame. Is there is there a view that I can see the timeline in like a 
higher, like, in a different view. Edit index. Okay. So, V1 is this. And so we have Sort, cannot sort. Source n, yeah, that's the beginning, 2054, and then, yeah, transition, and then v1 cut, 2154, 2134, 2114. So, yeah, so record in and record out are all at the same time. Source in and source out are all zero. Record duration is zero. So that's wrong. Um, this this reminds me of something I was thinking about the other day though. Um, So right now, what I'm doing is like the, the what the, what the code is doing is like it's it's essentially trimming the video file. It's it's adding it to the timeline and saying here's how here's where to start this particular media file. Here's where to end this. And this is where it appears in the timeline. Here's where it starts and stops, which is a little bit redundant, right? If you say here's here's where you start and stop the media file, you have a duration. <laughs> I guess you could like have it sped up or slowed down or something. Anyway, um, but I think there's a facility in Resolve that I've not re really played in, played around with much to like mark where, um, maybe not. Timeline view options. That, ooh, simple view. That's that, thumbnail view, okay, audio. Track height. What are these options? Timeline view options. Stack timelines. Huh. Does nothing. Oh, interesting. Oh, these are toggles. Okay, that toggle is interesting because now we can have multiple timelines. Nice. That's useful in other circumstances, so you don't have to go up here and switch between timelines. Uh, anyway. Wasn't there a thing, or am I misremembering? Maybe mark? Yeah, mark in. Mark, mark out. Right, so when this is like this, Research is needed. Um, all right, so I think what I was thinking, so a, a problem that I have sometimes, right? So I've I've gone through this workflow, exporting the OTI file, importing into DaVinci Resolve a few times now. And it would be kind of nice even if like let's say this was the end of uh where i wanted to cut the episode or at least where the system thought it should cut the, the end of the episode then that might be really close to like there might be additional files like there might be a next file now maybe that next file isn't part of 
what needs to go into the episode, it would still be nice to include it in the timeline and maybe the preceding one too, right? Just in case I wanted to bring the beginning back or if I wanted to maybe shift the, the music track or something for the whole thing, those sorts of things. Then it would be kind of neat to actually like have like the preceding file, the after file, and then have uh, in out markers saying where the actual, like where the, the timeline actually started. Because I think what those markers do, and I could be wrong, but I think the idea with the markers is that you can, uh, when you go to render, let's see if this loads. I've never really, I don't think I've had DaVinci Resolve open when I've been, when I've been streaming. So I was kind of nervous that things would break. So normally I just uncheck this, I check this. Um, does it, does it use the markers? It's something I just don't know. settings. Play ins out. Yep. For playback. Anyway, so that's something I, I need to look into more. But for now, probably should fix the issue at hand, whatever that is. Uh, so we know that the first clip seems fine. Like it, it renders out, it appears on the timeline. Uh, and let's, let's take a look at that. So, source range, confusingly enough, <laughs> I believe represents the time, well, the, the frame numbers Um, on the timeline? Wait, what is this? 20, 54, 55. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so that's the name that, that's shown. This could be anything, right? Um, I just used the file name, right? So media references, default media. This says essentially where the, the name of the file to source the video for this. And then what portion of the video to take. In this case, this should be the whole file. Uh, 72,000 frames, I think is what that is. Uh, yeah, 70, not 7,200. 72,000 divided by 60 frames per second uh, divided by 60 seconds in a minute should be 20 minutes. Okay, so that makes sense. And then we have a second clip. And the second clip does, uh, it, it references the next media file, right? So these are 20 minute clips. But this is a problem. Why is the duration zero? <laughs> there we go. So this is wrong. Um, okay. Do I have an example of a file that is not busted? If you're wondering, uh, yes, this did happen when I went and did the workflow before. Um, and I just like, I went and uh, it didn't happen for all of them though. So I think maybe the first few were fine. Maybe it was the last one. They'll figure out why things are happening. But um, I just had to, you know, manually drag the, the clips in and fix it up. Okay, so here is 18, 14, 55. We're placing it on the timeline starting at this frame 
for a duration of this this much the difference between these values should be 7200 that is the length of the media that we're selecting and then the next time range the next clip is for 20 minutes later start time is zero well this is wrong Or is it right? What, it, what does it look like if I import episode 13? Control shift I, number 13, okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we start at 1814. 55 uh, and then let's zoom out here 1814 1834 1854 so those are the right like order of things so that tells me that the source range here why is the start time of this one 15 960. Wait. Okay. So no, I'm I'm wrong about what I said before. So this represents everything that's avail available in the file. So basically for almost all the files, except generally for whatever reason, the first MKV file recorded by OBS at the beginning of a stream is slightly more than 20 minutes, but all of them should have an available range that looks like this. It's just saying the file has 72,000 frames in it. And then source range says within the video file, what are we taking? So we're taking from this start frame, this many frames, right? So we're skipping this many frames from the source video because it's like the five, seven, whatever minutes of kind of the stream intro. And then in the next clip, the source range start time is zero. We're taking the whole video and we're taking this much of it. And this part is always the same, mostly. And then again, we're taking this much from this video starting from zero. Okay, so why in test 17 is it different? Why, why is the duration zero? Like the start time should be zero. Uh, for most of these, except for the first one, probably. Uh, why is... Okay, what's going on with source range duration? Okay, so now we have a place to kind of focus in uh, and, and look at more critically. Okay, so this is the gap. This, this has nothing to do with what we're looking at, right? This is all part of the overlay track. So let's hide all that. So how we're generating uh, this is that we have tracks, this is the stack, we have a video track, an overlay track, and then audio tracks. So the video track is defined up here and has a start transition and then all the video subtracks. And the video subtracks are, we take the past internal tracks and we map over them. So source start frame, duration frames. So, when we exported, one of the track that duration frames must have been zero. Okay. Which means, and, a, and track is just one of the elements in children. We're just trying, tr changing the terminology here. This could be tracks instead. So internal to OTIO is called down here instead of export OTIO. We pass the results of generate children. Um, 
um, we uh, export OTIO takes an episode and it takes a stream. And from the episode, it reads the tracks and it parses cut start and cut end into start and end. So this is th these values. Hey, we can actually go look at the application again. These values are coming from the episode. So these are the children, the tracks, right? So these, these are defined. These should be fine. But there's something about generate children, generate tracks, generate cuts. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, where we are defining duration frames. So there's two paths in here. There's one path where if the start and end are the same, then we return a single, like, the cut is just within one video file. So you can have just a single uh, child, a single internal track to represent that cut. And duration frames is this value, right? But if it's not, that means the, the work c covers multiple media files. And that's the case here, right? There's multiple files. We need to cut from multiple files to assemble together the episode. Um, and so in that case, we call find media cursors, cut sequence media start media end, and we get media intermediates. So media end here is interesting. We might look at that, although, I don't know, there must be some kind of edge case here, some something. I think what we'll have to do is we'll just go into the debugger um, in the front end and kind of step through the logic for this specific export. Because it's not a problem with everything, so there must be something about how the data is interacting with the logic here. So what does find media clip cursor end do? Okay, we try to find a clip based on a condition. If we have the clip, we say clip in minus time. a number that's a number according to TypeScript but maybe it's not okay and then uh, if we go back media intermediates um, is probably not the source of the problem because what we're seeing here right so the the generated set of cuts right for the, the export the first one is fine, but everything else is problematic, including the end. So it's unlikely that the problem is inside of find media cursor, uh, clip cursors, because we, we already have media end, and this shouldn't be mutating it. Uh, likely there's some interaction, maybe, maybe in convert media clip cursor to internal track. Hey, look, duration frames. Duration is a number times FPS. So somehow duration is zero. I don't know. So let's let's set up the debugger to see if we can figure out what's going on here. Hey, look, I already have exporter <laughs> opened. Uh, let's see. So we want oh this this is the wrong exporter. Hold on, let's let's go in here. This is our uh, subtitle track exporter. Uh, OTIO exporter. W one of these export.ts files. A lot close, other tabs, there we go. All right, so the easiest thing to do probably is just to put a breakpoint, maybe in generate children. So there's only one episode. 
that we're processing here. So I think I'll just set the breakpoint right here. And so when I go up here and I click export, uh, we'll save it to test 17. Yep. Um, it didn't, it didn't break point. What's up with that? All right, I'm gonna take a break here. I'm gonna go get some water. I'll be back in a few uh, and we'll do some debugging. BRB.